with that, um, I'd like to introduce Frank Tabich, National Sales Director at Commvault. Uh, Frank? Good morning. Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, uh, again, my name is Frank Tabich. I, uh, I manage the, uh, the practice around content and mobility business for Commvault. And when we say content, really, it's around uh, how do you derive value from the data. And mobility, we'll be talking about uh, endpoints and how do you provide governance and compliance around protecting and managing all the endpoint devices we've seen in, uh, uh, in, in enterprises. Uh, before I go there, um, just a quick overview of Commvault. Commvault is a data management company. We're known for our backup data protection solution. But really, it's more than that. The underlying technology under the hood is really an indexing capability. And as some of you know, when you index the data, really sky's the limit in terms of what you can do with it. So I'll be highlighting some of the use cases around what you can do with the index uh, once you protect the data or once you archive the data. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's really satisfying the IT processes at, at the same time tackling line of business type of you know, issues with uh, e-discovery, with compliance, and all these different mandates and requirements for corporates. So some of the topics today that uh, we know we'll talk about is around data governance challenges, uh, protecting endpoint. It's really an integral part of data management today, and how do you how is it a priority for organizations? And uh, on top of it, it's search. Right, search is known to be a part of an archive solution, but really it's more than that. It's really our, it's an enterprise strategy for organizations, and really a modern way to manage compliance, e-discovery, and risk for organizations. And how do you transform uh, the data to an information asset for organizations? So uh, we will uh, talk about all these different components from a high level, and I'll be more ha than happy to take questions at the end. So challenges today, it's no secret that data is growing at a range of 50%, and your mileage may vary. But it is growing because of the video data. There's uh, all sort of data really in an environment, and it's amplifying that with the cloud. Right? So you have to manage data on-prem, in the cloud, in all these different locations. That's a very uh, hard thing from a governance and compliance point of view because retention in the cloud, return, retention on-site is really having challenges for organizations. And at the same time, when you start looking at it from hidden data, every copy of the data, on the average, 10 to 15 copies. Actually, I've had customers who had that at probably 30 plus copies of the same record in an organization. Think of that is from a backup point of view. You back up the data. There are incremental. There are full backups. There's the archive. Uh, there's the email that have attachment to the file that's sitting in the backup. So if you look at the the growth, this hyper growth of all the data in the environment, you have so many duplicates across the enterprise, regardless if it's on tape in the cloud or on disk. Another challenge that uh, we're seeing right now for organizations, especially the last three years, around endpoints, around laptop desktop protection. So uh, you see challenges around protecting, you know, laptops. Uh, people losing their laptops, especially if you have mobile force or you have, uh, you know, remote sites. Uh, you know, half of the organizations are not protecting laptops, and this is an understandable situation because laptops are not like servers; they're not sitting on a high-speed network. You want to be able to protect these laptops, even if you're sitting at a Starbucks, for example, or uh, you're, you're traveling on an airplane. It, it has to have the network aware capabilities and the restart capabilities to, to really tackle these issues of protecting the data for the organization. Another thing that you hear about is the security, right? Ransomware. Uh, ransomware is really when someone really encrypts certain data on laptops and not releasing that, that record unless you have paid certain ransom for that. So this is spiking up, and you're probably hearing about that in the news. Um, this is another challenge for organizations, especially we have, you know, with the BYOD strategies with people, you know, using their own devices, they're using, you know, tablets, you're using different devices. It's a big challenge, especially if you have customer records, you have sales records, you have uh, government records. Uh, all these different data have to really be secured, encrypted, and controlled by the organization. And the last area is visibility, right? So organizations uh, have the issues with 
employees, you know, putting stuff in a box.com or a OneDrive or a Google Drive. It's it probably it's great because they serve their purpose. But at the same time, when you start looking at it from a governance point of view, especially if you're working in a regulated environment or a government or a healthcare type of environment, um, being able to control that data is critical because it has patient record, it has customer record, you know, credit card, social security number. You want to make sure you have a governance on that data. So these are the three areas that we're seeing around the mobile area from protecting to have security around the data. And the last one is to be able to share and collaborate in a secure fashion for the organization. Um, and another trend that we're seeing, uh, it's a challenge also collection, right? Uh, if you probably serve the, uh, working with the uh, legal folks in your organization or marketing folks, they want to collect data. There are data points that they collect. Um, for example, you see the forensic folks, they go and collect data from endpoints. Uh, then they go and collect data also from laptop desktops or from file servers. So you have all these folks collecting data and sometimes it's the same record within the organization. So you can see all these duplicate activities, right? You get an e-discovery request, you have to go to the archive, you have to go to backup, you have to go to PSDs, uh, same thing on laptop desktops. So there are duplicate efforts across the organizations. Uh, some organizations, they outsource that process and it's very costly. Some organizations, they buy all these different silos, we'll call them the silo solution. Uh, maybe it's an appliance that does only archiving and an appliance that does e-discovery. There's a cost associated with that. At the same time, it doesn't really capture the entire picture. Because when you start looking at a business process, you're looking at the complete defensibility and control of that data. And the last challenge we're seeing is mandates around retention, right? We're going to keep the data, but for how long, right? So the key here is to adhere with the corporate policy around how long we're going to keep the records, what type of records, where are we going to keep the records, and we have a cloud strategy. How are we going to align it with this retention strategy? Keep in mind that as I walk into organizations and talk about retention and governance, you have over 74% of the data is candidate for retention and archiving. So you have the active data, which is slash backup data. Then you have the semi-active data. And you have the archive data. You have the compliance data. And now you have the cloud data. So how do you provide control and governance across all these different data sets? Uh, is it critical for organizations? And how do you identify the risk in the data prior to shipping it to a tape or, for example, or to a cloud solution? Uh, when you start looking at data and records, you start looking at active and passive records. So it's critical for you to understand what's an active record in my environment and what's a stale or passive record because this is aligned with your record retention. Active data needs to be protected on an incremental fashion where passive data needs probably to be archived and retained for long-term retention or even deleted for defensible deletion reporting. So if your folks in your organization say, hey, emails, we're keeping emails for you know, one year, or we're keeping files for three years. You want to make sure after three years, these files or emails are no longer in your organization. We refer to that as defensible deletion. You want to make sure you have a defensibility around not having records, so you'll be protected when you have a subpoena, for example, for certain records. And we see in these challenges across, you know, many verticals. This is some of the verticals. Uh, in manufacturing, for healthcare, for financial, for education, if you're in a government or local government, city, counties. So we're seeing all these different challenges around e-discovery litigation, uh, around uh, being able to, uh, to, to satisfy the request for litigation and for controlling these records within the organization around the retention and disposition of records. So you have, a, you have a granular management of record, data sprawl, and really satisfying all these mandates. As we start looking at the solution, it's really fast forward. So you see all these challenges in the organization. It has to do with data growth, and it has to do with all where the data is coming from and where to put the data in your environment. So the following is really a, the flow in terms of how are we going to start with the process. Before I go to the flow, there are three areas that we tackle with Convolt. 
back to the three areas, right? Around how do you protect the data? How do you secure it and give visibility for records? And how do you collaborate amongst all these different users in your environment? The modern strategy for data governance, when you, when you have an environment, and this is applicable, I've, I've done this at you know, dozens of customers. Uh, when I walk into a customer around governance strategy, the first part is, hey, where's, where's the data? What's your inventory? I call this the GPS for your data management strategy or data governance. Let's understand what are your passive records. Um, you know, how do you improve visibility in your organizations? Um, can you analyze the data, right? Can we, and really it can be simply by metadata. Give me all the data that's been sitting for three years on this expensive disk. Uh, get, you know, tell me the emails that are available in your environment for the last, you know, 90 days. So analyzing the data. So you have the tools from Convo to really analyze understanding what are the structures, unstructured, even down to the files and the data type in your environment. The second part is around intelligent collection. What are we collecting in your environment? You want to be able to collect the data and in one pass be able to back up the data and or archive it, right? So as I stop collecting the data, all the active data, I want to put it in the backup bucket where all the stale data or the old data, I want to be able to archive it for long-term retention. So in, and this is in a single path. So as you start doing that, you'll be able to eliminate PSTs, you're lowering cost around storage utilization, and if you have a cloud strategy, you're only putting the relevant data in the cloud. You're not grabbing a bunch of, you know, the garbage and data that's not related to your business or some files that are, that should be disposed, you're not putting it in the cloud. You're only putting stuff that you care about in the cloud. The third area is around content-based retention. This is really the, um, you know, we're all familiar with archiving. You've probably heard of archiving, but really it's a way to put data, old data in uh, lower cost disk or lower cost, you know, cloud storage. Uh, content-based retention is similar to that, but it amplifies that by not only we're putting stuff based on how old the files are or how big the files are, we're really putting it based on what, how, what's the value of the data to the business. So for example, and really this is kind of data classification. Let's say, you know, grab all this data related to HR processes and put it in the HR bucket. Or all the data related to project XYZ, I want to put it in this particular storage location. So really we bucketize the data based on it's relevant to the business. So based on its content. It can be the content from a metadata point of view or keywords, for example. So you can set up a policy to say all the data that have to do with financial records I want to encrypt it and put it on that disk, but everything else, put it on the other disk or push it to the cloud. So you can do a lot of retention and, and control of your data based on its meaning to the business. And the last area is search and compliance. When you start putting data in any bucket, you want to be able to mine it, right? Um, and this touches e-discovery and compliance uh, and governance. So for example, and really it goes to the three areas in e-discovery. Give me all the data coming from the following custodian that have the following keywords that have certain date ranges. And the last area is endpoint protection. You know, endpoint protection is really have a higher visibility today in the market because, uh, you know, because of security issues, right? You see all the security breaches, uh, you know, like uh, what happened to Blue, Blue Cross, Blue Shield three years ago, it happened to the target. Uh, uh, you know, breaches and all these different breaches in the market, it has to do with the data layer. It's not at the firewall layer. People were able to get to the data and, uh, and breach the environment. So you want to be able to control the data from where it's coming from, not just from the data center, it's from outside the data center. And that's why endpoint protection is critical for your data and data management and governance strategy. So this is the analytics, the one I talked about, the first step. Just uh, keep in mind the analytics, really, you'll be able to get reports around uh, what type of data down to the actual files that are, uh, you know, man in, in your environment. The next part is the holistic approach. And again, we'll be able to grab data from the cloud and to the cloud, grabbing the data from endpoint devices, from the email, like Exchange. You can grab data from Office 365. If you're on Office 365 today, you can have an SMTP relay for uh, for journal data and control it for e-discovery and governance uh, point of view. You'll be able to grab file share, NAS devices. So if you have big NAS filers or EM, you know, some kind of storage devices, 
you want to know what's on it, you want to know how do you how are you going to retain it, you can point to this data and start managing it with that one path intelligent collection. And you have all the capabilities around I'll back up active data and I'll archive non-active data or passive data in my environment. And like I said, it is flexible from on-prem, cloud, or hybrid. I'm seeing more hybrid at customers, uh, customer environments. I want to do short-term retention and maybe for long-term retention or for deep archiving, I want to push stuff to AWS or to Azure or to any type of cloud solution. Convolt supports over 22 cloud connectors built into the product and we're adding more. So uh, it's all the rest APIs. So you'll be able to take the data uh, on a short term and you can do push it to a cloud solution or you can push it straight from your environment straight to that cloud, um, including uh, you know, being able to protect the data in something like Azure, for example. We talk about compliance, right? The three things, uh, metadata, custodians, and keyword searches, right? Give me all the data between a frank computer between April of 2008 and January of 2012 that have public record, record declaration, the following PII record if you're in healthcare, uh, or, or you know patient record or social, you know identify social security in this data set that we didn't know about, or the following credit card information in that data set. You'll be able to do that. So we talked about securing endpoints, and this is really tackling the three areas: the backup, the data loss prevention and the encryption at the source, in flight, and at the target. So you'll be able to choose how you're going to encrypt the data. And we satisfy the, hover, the, you know, the highest government encryption, the FIPS encryption uh, for, the, for the US government. So you'll be able to really do as, mu you know, as much security around data, covering it from the data layers and from the application layer as well. And collaboration is a critical piece. So if, instead of your folks you know, using you know, all these different uh, siloed or consumer grade, you know, like a Dropbox type of solution, you'll be able to leverage the, pl the platform for the very same thing. So you'll have your Convolt mobile app, you can push data to your users and people can share links within the organizations. So it's really, it's another Dropbox like solution, but it's really for enterprise grade. So data sitting in your environment and uh, managed by you. So you'll be able to protect it and provide e-discovery, for example, on that data sitting in your secure environment. And governance really around protecting data and uh, you know, company sanctioned data and maintaining secure copy in your environment and really encryption. And really this is how you achieve governance across endpoint and files as well. From an access point of view, access is a critical point for any data management platform like Convolt. Um, so you have avenue to get to that data. It's not a black box that nobody can access the data from. So you'll be able to get an Outlook plugin if you're doing email archiving or email management. You'll be able to get an Explorer plugin. So if you're using Windows, you want to right click and find and browse the file system at Convolt as if it's a Windows shift shares. You can do that as well. Web console, if you have people traveling or if you have hospitals or nurses, they want to tap into a web interface to check their emails or their records without logging into a sick client, they can do that as well. And also you have the mobile app. So you'll have the mobile app to surf the actual email archive or the file share, you know, and being able to share data amongst different users. So there are many avenues. In Convolt with the release 11, we have an open API. So if you want to build your own platform or you want to connect it with your own web interface or web pages, we have an open API, you can integrate it as well down to content store. And that content store, that circle you have, really can be the data, can be the cloud, and can be the disk. So it doesn't have to be disk, it can be cloud as well. And it's completely transparent to, to the IT users. So you can serve the data and it can be in Azure, it can be in AWS, it can be in your own public, you know, a private cloud, let's say if you're using, you know, you know, object storage for example, and you'll be able to manage the data as if it's just from a single console. Proactivity around e-discovery is critical. You can uh, define your litigation readiness strategy and index on demand. So if you have an environment that's spanning the hundreds of terabytes or petabytes type of data and you don't want to index the universe, it's okay. You can do short-term indexing. 
you can index on demand. Hey, we got a request. We can flick the switch and start indexing these custodian data. So indexing on demand can be a critical piece for your litigation strategy. And with Commvault around collection, we can help you in that strategy. And really, it satisfies all the uh, users, right? Back to the line of business. And uh, excuse me about the animation in uh, in SharePoint, but uh, in PowerPoint. So you have uh, it satisfy all these different users, right? So you have end users around collaboration. You have enterprise architect. You have general counsel being able to access the data instead of waiting weeks to get to their data. And you have the CIO again around managing lowering costs and managing risk in the in your environment. The value for organizations, again, managing risk, search, and endpoint productivity. These are the three areas where we can provide value right, around mitigation risk. And again, really, it lines up with governance. How do we control that data in your environment and give people access to it and give you visibility to it as well? And the last slide I have here is really the key is to be proactive. I mean, we can talk about this all day long, right? But the key here is like an insurance, right? You can get your insurance ahead of time when you need it, right? So key here for data governance and data management strategy is to plan ahead, be proactive. Proactivity leads to visibility of threats. You'll know the threats that were before they come. And really providing governance around litigation and also cost reduction and defensibility around uh, e-discovery and compliance practices. So all these different areas will be available to you simply by collecting the data ahead of time, and simply protecting it. This is something that you're doing today in your environment. When you collect all the data and protect it and index it, whether it's reactively or proactively, you'll have a great governance around the data because it's all about indexing at the end of the day. So if you remember anything in this webinar, it's all about indexing. It's around grabbing the data and building the index. Index, it will be the critical piece for all these business processes, including e-discovery and compliance. Excellent. Thank you so much, Frank. Awesome presentation, extremely timely. I think the other great point you made is just being proactive and planning ahead, which is uh, often hard to do. Uh, so at this time, we're ready for Q&A. If you do have any questions, please post them to the questions pane in your GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll take as many as time allows. We do have a few minutes and a few questions coming in. So with that, let's get started. Uh, first question. For Frank, who in an organization is typically responsible for ensuring data on laptops and, des and desktops is secure in managing endpoint devices? It sounds like maybe there's some accountability and confusion there. Um, and with that, usually things slip through the cracks, Frank. So it sounds like they are looking for maybe some best practices in, uh, in who typically is responsible for that data. What are your thoughts? Yes, so the last three years, they've been usually this is a desktop type of conversation, right? For, so for the last three years, because of the ransomware and all these issues with security, this is literally is, uh, well, I've seen it the last two, three years managed by the, uh, you know, the CISO's office, the security folks. Uh, it's critical piece for your organization. So, um, you know, aligning it with IT, IT processes. Uh, so this, the security folks in your organization is looking for ways to protect it, but Again, it lines up with the IT processes and legal and compliance, right? So it's really driven by mandates from the legal team as well to find the data. Because remember, when you start satisfying the e-discovery request, you want to make sure you have 100% control of your data to satisfy the safe harbor provision and really to collect 100% of your data, as far as you know, in your environment. So it's critical for defensibility and to, to avoid fines and sanctions around the FRCP regulation. Excellent, thank you. Uh, another question, how easily can an organization investigate equipment and assets to find if data is at risk? You talked a, you know, a bit about the litigation aspect and just protecting against that. Um, it sounds like that timeliness is critical. What are your thoughts? This has been critical for organizations. I can tell you the process today is manual process. It's a really messy process. And usually organizations, when they have a compliance like a HIPAA audit or they have some kind of SEC request for certain data, 
it's really very messy environment to go and find data. Uh, imagine, I mean, we're talking about 15 copies of the same record in the organization at a 50% growth in a typical environment. So um, as you can imagine, it's very taxing on, on organizations just to go and find that risk. Uh, where the data, what type of data we have, what's in the data, right? So the key for this is to, again, back to the indexing, as you start backing up the data or archiving and collecting the data, building the index will be the critical piece, will be really the, uh, the secret sauce piece to really go and find the data that's at risk, the risk for your organizations, and, uh, and quarantine that risk in your environment. So it's not just identifying the risk, they're providing an actionable workflow around how do you grab this risk and quarantine it, whether you want to put it in a separate isolated storage or you want to delete it, uh, that's the key. So the key here is indexing. The process today is very messy. It's a manual process. Um, so that hopefully that, that answers the question. Yes, excellent, thank you. Um, we do have time for another question. Again, if you have other additional questions, please post them in the questions pane. I think we can sneak one or two more in. Uh, we do have one more at this point. Uh, how does cost impact the current environment? I'm, I'm speculating a bit, but it may be, you know, if budgets are, are constrained, you know, is the data security a, a bigger challenge versus companies that maybe have larger budgets? Uh, any thoughts there, Frank? Yeah, definitely. So take e-discovery and compliance. Um, you know, if, if some of the folks on the call they are they're probably about, about part of IT, usually legal runs, sometimes they run their own processes. And uh, I worked in an organization where we had a blanket PO where we were spending tons of money on collecting data and the cost for e-discovery were outsourcing the process. So the cost can be very high around doing something that should be part of any data management strategy. So the cost can be greatly reduced, which is great for CIOs and executive in your organization as you start collecting the record proactively and leverage the data you're backing up, leverage the data you're archiving. That's the key here is we're, we don't want you to duplicate effort, right? So the cost can be impacted in a favorable way when you start leveraging the data you're touching today, which is an IT process called backup, called archive. As you look at the backup and archive, if you just index it, that's your litigation readiness strategy, for example, and governance strategy. So the cost, it's very costly today, but when you start looking at the IT processes, leveraging the IT processes to, to help you, it's going to serve, you know, save organizations tons of money uh, in the next, you know, in, in a very short time. So it's a very short, uh, very short return on investment for organizations when they start defining this type of, you know, record management or the uh, governance strategy. Excellent, thank you. That's a great tip, and I think short time to ROI is always a great message, <laughs> right? 